Imagine you invested rupees 10 lakhs 3 years back and the following are your per annual returns. Year 1 70%, year 2 minus 25%, year 3 minus 30%. If you calculate the average returns for 3 years, the simple average return would be plus 5%. You might feel that capital is safe and the yield is plus 5% even though past 2 years returns are bad. But check out the actual returns and real numbers. Surprised? Yes. If you calculate the investment value at the end of each year, you'll find that at the end of third year, the investment value is rupees 8,92,500. A decrease of 10.75%. But your simple average mean is plus 5% but your actual returns are minus 10.75%. This is a clear example of how mean average returns can be misleading. Most analysts use geometric mean for a more accurate average portfolio returns, especially when compounding is involved. Let's delve into this further. Don't worry about the formulas used in the video. We can easily simplify them using our finance book Excel. Please watch the video completely. Hi, welcome to PSI. Plan, save and invest. Myself Kumar. Holding period returns. This is the most widely used formula across the investment community. But let's look at the tricky part of these calculations. Holding period returns on the other hand gives a more accurate picture of actual returns. The formula is very simple. end of period value minus initial value plus income divided by initial value this formula is used for single period to calculate holding period returns for multiple periods the formula is even simple 1 plus r1 into 1 plus r2 so on 1 plus rn minus 1 n is number of periods don't worry about this formulas we will show with the examples But to get a better understanding of holding period returns and other metrics, we used Gold's five years returns, and this data is sourced from reliable source. This website gives us Gold's uh, per annum returns for the last forty-five years. So you can see uh, the website. To keep it simple, we took the annual returns of Gold for past five years. Year one, two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty-three, we have taken the data. 2019 returns are 21.12%, 2020 returns are 13.68%, 2021 returns are 4.28%, 2022 returns are 5.74%, and 2023 returns are 9.84%. So if you take the average, simple average, it is 10.93%. We will calculate the following metrics on gold past 5 year returns. One is arithmetic mean holding period return geometric mean harmonic mean each metric has its own importance most investors globally look for holding period returns and geometric period mean these two are very important for you as well so let us see how to calculate them and how to evaluate them okay the first the arithmetic mean the formula and the calculation is as follows and the arithmetic mean is 10.93% it is a useful measure However as we explained before the arithmetic mean has its own limitations and this formula is for calculating holding period returns for multiple periods so we are taking the data for 5 years of gold so if you calculate using this formula then the holding period return or the total return is equal to 66.76% so 66.76% is the holding period return for the last 5 years in gold investment to evaluate this you can actually do it by calculating the amount at the end of each year so if 10 lakhs is invested and in 2019 21.12% then you probably might the end of the year value would be 12 lakhs 11200 so if you manually calculate this value if the value is equal to 66.76% so the uh, holding period return value and the manual calculation both are equal Now if you want to know the average returns for the 5 years divide 66.76% by 5 the value is 13.35% this is what analyst has shown on their website as a average annualized returns 
So if your any analyst is showing average annualized returns, then this is how they calculate it. I hope you understand that this method is the easiest way to calculate the holding period return. But have you noticed that the difference between arithmetic mean and the holding period return? Arithmetic mean is equal to 10.93%, but actual return is 13.35%, which is also called as a holding period return. This is the demerit of using arithmetic mean or simple average. Most investors are trapped using this methodology. Okay, you might think that holding period return is fair enough and you know, you can use the holding period return. Yeah, it is up to you. But most investors want to know the actual returns on the amount reinvested yearly. Also, most of us do SIPs or ad funds during the year. To include these changes and to know the compounding effect, geometric mean is most widely used by analysts to show to their clients or investors. So let's examine what is geometric mean. Uh, let's take our first example to understand better. In, uh, because uh, in the first example we have negative returns. This example helps us better understand the importance of geometric mean. The three-year annual returns are as follows, year 1 70%, year 2 minus 25% and year 3 minus 30%. The formula is straightforward, geometric mean is equal to 1 plus R1 into 1 plus R2 into 1 plus R3 whole power 1 by n, that is 1 by n, 3 years, so we take in 3. So it is like 1 plus 0.7 into 1 minus 0.25% because uh, it year 2 25% negative returns into 1 minus 0.3 whole power 1 by 3. The 3 is 3 years we have taken, so the periods are 3. So the geometric mean is equal to minus 3.72%. Let us calculate the holding period return for these 3 years and check out its accuracy, whether the geometric mean is accurate or not. So what we have done is like we have gone through the traditional approach. So year 1 70%, so if you have invested 10 lakh rupees, the asset would have been appreciated from 10 lakhs to 17 lakhs. Year to minus 25%, the 17 lakhs asset has been depreciated to 12 lakhs 75,000. Year 3 minus 30%, the asset has been even more depreciated to 8 lakh 92,500. So if you take the beginning value and the ending value and uh, calculate the holding period return, then you will find that the return is minus 3.58%. So you can observe that holding period return and geometric return are almost the same, even though the given values are negative. Similarly, if we calculate the geometric mean for the second example, that is gold returns for the five years, let's see what is the, what are, what is the number. It is 9.31% much less than holding period returns that in 13.35%. You must be wondering why there is a huge difference between holding period returns and geometric mean. This is because the geometric mean gives the compounding returns on your investment. The geometric mean has two main advantages. The calculation uses all the sequence terms making it suitable for more math analysis. Changes in the sample do not affect the geometric mean. It gives more weight to small observations. Most investors worldwide ask analysts to show the portfolio returns in geometric mean. They do this to get better picture of the returns. Please remember that geometric mean is generally smaller than the arithmetic mean. So that is the importance of geometric mean. So it will give the compounding effect of your investment. And uh, most uh, investors like, look for the geometric mean. First, they look for holding period returns, then they look for the geometric mean returns. Okay, fine. Now, there is one more mean called harmonic mean. Let us examine what is it. The harmonic mean is appropriate in cases where the data is a rate or a ratio, such as PE ratio. This mean may be viewed as a particular type of weighted mean that is helpful in the presence of outliers. Outliers means like if you take a huge data, there will be like some outliers where like you know there will be like a huge difference between the central data and the outliers. You might see many outliers if you want to analyze your portfolio. 
uh, using daily returns. You can see the sample data shown in Excel daily returns of IAFL stock. If you do more statistical analysis, harmonic mean is used. But we will uh, we notice one importance of harmonic mean which is explained in this video. Harmonic mean gives equal importance to each variable in the data. For example, every stock's PE ratio should be given equal importance in a portfolio. We use harmonic mean when we need to give more weight to the smaller items. The harmonic mean is often used to calculate the average ratios or rates of the given values. It is the best measure for ratios and rates because it makes the data points weights equal. So you should understand that harmonic mean gives the equal weightage to the all variables in the data. So if you are calculating the average PE ratio of your portfolio, then you have to give equal weight to each stock in the portfolio. For example, you invested in more stocks. You want to find the average PE ratio of all stocks in your portfolio. And you want to compare it with the Nifty 50 PE ratio, which is not 27. If your portfolio PE ratio is too high, then you want to do some adjustments. You want to compare your portfolio PE ratio with the benchmark uh, PE ratio of Nifty 50. If you find that PE ratio of uh, your portfolio is much higher or much uh, lower, then you want to do some adjustments. So what we do is like, you know, we can calculate the average PE ratio of all your stocks using harmonic mean and see what are the differences like, you know, calculating using harmonic mean and arithmetic mean. To simplify it, let us take 5 stocks PE ratio and calculate the harmonic mean and arithmetic mean. So you can see stock 1 PE 1 30, stock 2 PE ratio is 80, stock 3 PE ratio is 60, stock 4 PE ratio is 25 and stock 5 PE ratio is 40. Let's uh, take this as an example. The formula is simple. Harmonic mean formula is equal to n divided by n is number of periods. 1 by x1 plus 1 by x2 plus 1 by x3 plus so on 1 by x1. The formula is very simple. So if you calculate the harmonic mean for the stock PE ratio, 5 divided by so on, and you arrived at a number 39.216. So your harmonic mean average of all the stocks in the portfolio, the 5 stocks in the portfolio is 39.216. Now let us calculate the arithmetic mean and check the difference. If you calculate the arithmetic mean, 30 plus 80 plus 60 plus 25 plus 40 divided by 5 then the arithmetic mean is 47. There is a huge difference between arithmetic mean and harmonic mean. You can see the big difference. This is because harmonic mean gives equal weightage to all the variables in the data. Analysts widely use the harmonic mean to find the average PE ratio of your portfolio stocks. Generally harmonic mean is lesser than geometric mean and geometric mean is lesser than arithmetic mean. All good. Are you bugged up with the formulas what I have explained in this video? Forget about all formulas and remember only the concept. You can calculate arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean in Excel easily. Let us take the gold 5 year returns example and see how to calculate arithmetic mean, geometric mean and harmonic mean. Okay, so this is the formula for arithmetic mean. This is a simple average formula. So the Excel formula is equal to average of select the uh, last 5 years data. So you will arrive at the number. To calculate geometric mean, the formula is very simple. You type is equal to and type geo mean and select the data last 5 years uh, returns data. So you will get the geometric mean. To calculate harmonic mean, you just uh, type in the cell uh, is equal to and uh, type harmonic mean and select the data. So you will arrive at the harmonic mean. So arithmetic mean is 10.93%, geometric mean is 9.31%, harmonic mean is 7.94%. So you can observe that arithmetic mean is greater than geometric mean, and geometric mean is greater than harmonic mean. So I would like to conclude, you know, uh, analyst reports and mutual fund returns can be tricky if you don't understand the returns calculation. And also holding period returns and geometric returns are widely used to analyze the returns of a portfolio. The harmonic mean calculates the average PE ratio of the portfolio of stocks. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you have any queries, please ask them in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.